These are the cards of the two trifectas that you need to consider. Whether you're team Chase or team Amex, these are the cards that ensure you're getting money back whenever you spend, but also help you travel both in economy or business and first while paying a fraction of the cost. But what are these cards? What are the differences and which one should you get? Well, first, the Chase Trifecta is probably the most talked about card setup out there. And even then, there are a few variations of cards that make up the Trifecta, with most of them including two foundational cards that cost you nothing to get, which is amazing itself, but also great for anyone dipping their toes into the credit card game, given the little to no commitment needed and still laddering up to the full Trifecta. So what do these cards get you? First, the most basic card, the Chase Freedom Unlimited. Yes, there are a lot of more flashy cards out there, some that give you elevated points or perks when you're spending in specific categories, but there will always be spend that doesn't fall into categories like travel or restaurants. And that's where the Freedom Unlimited comes in with its 1.5% cash back on all of your spend, no matter which category and no matter how much. So if you're spending $1,000, you're going to get $15 back. Well, not directly. Although this is a cash back card, you're getting 1.5 times points instead. So your $1,000 of spend will net you 1,500 points. From there, you can go through the Chase Ultimate Rewards portal and choose cashback to then convert these 1,500 points to $15 straight cashback, among a few other ways you can redeem your points. This method means your points are worth exactly and at least one cent per point, but we'll go over ways of getting even more value later in this video. Apart from that, spending at restaurants and drugstores will net you three times points, and spending on travel through their portal will net you five times points. For a no annual fee card, this has a pretty major sign up bonus, giving you $200 when you're spending $500 in the first three months, as well as 5% back on grocery store spend in the first year. That means you're getting 40% return on spend on your first $500 and up to a maximum of $600 back in the year if you max out the grocery store offer. And because these are paid out in points, you're getting 20,000 points for the sign-up bonus and up to 60,000 points on the grocery store offer. That is a lot of free money, especially on spend that you probably would have done anyways. There's also a bunch of trip and purchase protection and perks across Dash Pass, Lyft, and Instacart, but I'll link more resources down below if you're interested. Now, remember how I said there were variations to the Chase Trifecta? And that applies here, where you can replace the Chase Freedom Unlimited with the business version, the Chase Inc. Unlimited, which is what I did. Yes, it's a business card, but you probably qualify without even knowing it if you have any type of side income, sell on Etsy, flip things on Facebook Marketplace. Now, there aren't that many differences with the cards because it still has the highlight giving you 1.5 times points on all of your spend, along with similar protections, including rental car coverage, which is primary when used for business. But what made me choose this card over the Freedom Unlimited is the higher sign-up bonus, with a current high of 90,000 points for 6k in spend. If you're not able to naturally hit that target, then I would stick with the Freedom Unlimited, but if you can, that's a lot of points. The Chase Freedom Flex, the second card in the Chase Trifecta and really outshines the rest in some very specific areas. It more or less has similar elevated points when you're spending at dining, drugstores, and travel through the portal. However, it only has one times on the general everything else category. But the standout perk here is getting 5% back or five times points when you're spending in quarterly categories up to $1,500 in spend every quarter. And those categories are really broad, including grocery stores, Amazon, PayPal, and more. If you're able to max out this spend every quarter, that's $75 extra per quarter or a total of $300 every year. Oh, and this card also has no annual fee. So combining the Freedom Flex with a card like the Freedom Unlimited also lets you double up on the sign-up bonus of $200 and the 5% grocery store offer. Plus, after 24 months, you could cancel the card and then get it again to trigger another sign-up bonus for each of the two cards. Because there's a rule 
cool where you can only get one bonus every 24 months. Again, all without paying any annual fees. Now, everyone has cell phones nowadays, and you've probably had an experience where you lost your phone or probably damaged it. Well, then you'll be happy to hear that this card comes with cell phone protection as long as you're paying your monthly bill with the card, up to $800 per claim after a small deductible. The Chase Sapphire Preferred, the more popular and in my opinion, the better third card for the Chase Trifecta. Coming in at $95 for the annual fee, this is the only card that requires you to pay to keep it open, but for good reason. Because first, you'll get a chance to offset the annual fee with a $50 credit for hotels booked through the portal which can effectively bring your annual fee down to just $45. There are also some overlapping spending categories compared to the Freedom, but some standout ones include two times on travel and three times on online groceries as well as streaming. So if we already cut the annual fee in half, what else does this card have going for it? Well, there's a baseline sign-up bonus of 60,000 points when you sign up and hit the minimum spend of $4,000 in the first three months. That's at minimum $600 in cash back, which already pays for the annual fee multiple, multiple times over. But points on the Sapphire Preferred, and in fact, all of your points, because you can pool points from different cards together, are actually worth more than one cent per point when you redeem them for travel through the portal. Because a perk of this card means you're getting 25% more value when you redeem points that way, which then means you're boosting the value of all of your points across all of your cards. But apart from the 25% bonus, a truly wonderful thing that this card unlocks is flexibility and being able to transfer your points at favorable rates to one of their airline or hotel partners, sometimes with bonuses too. Which is exactly what I did just a couple weeks ago when I transferred my points over to Aeroplan to book business class tickets over to Asia valuing my points at over five cents per point. That's way higher than your typical redemptions and still higher than an average of two cents per point when redeeming at partners. Now, being a more elevated card, it has more travel and purchase coverage, including primary car rental insurance, as well as an elevated partner benefits with more credits like GoPuff. That said, this card does have an alternative with the Chase Sapphire Reserve, being priced at $550 for its annual fee, but does come with an easy to use travel credit and more perks in general. And if you want a comparison between some of these cards, I'll link a video down below. So the Chase Trifecta is an awesome setup, letting you start dipping your toes in with free cards like the Freedom Unlimited and Freedom Flex to start building your points for when you get a Sapphire line of cards that unlocks more value for all of those points. But now let's compare to the American Express side of things and their trifecta, starting with the American Express Blue Business Plus card. Following a similar pattern to Chase, this card builds a solid foundation for everything else to be built on top of, offering you two times points on all of your spend, up to $50,000 of spend in a year. So unless your spending is way off the charts, for most people, you'll probably be able to be under this limit. And yes, although it's a business card, if you have some sort of side hobby, side income, or plan to start a business, then you probably qualify. Then being a no annual fee card, you're still getting a sign up bonus of 15,000 points when you hit $3,000 of spend in the first three months. It's not as high as the Chase Freedom cards, especially when the straight cash back value of Amex points is only 0.6 cents per point, not one cent like the Chase points. Instead, with Amex points, you'll need to book flights through their portal to get one cent per point or transfer to one of their amazing partners to get elevated value of say two cents or more. That said, there have been historically high offers like 75,000 points on this card when you hit a much higher spend of $15,000. But with little to no shopping or travel protections on this card, it's pretty much it. A good sign up bonus with two times points on all of your spend makes it a well-situated foundational card. The American Express Gold card. Yes, I've been saying this forever, but I'm going to do it because this card is at or near the top of my list of cards I wanna get because it's just that great. The Blue Business Plus is the catch-all card, 
but the gold is a workhorse card that will give you four times points on your restaurant spend worldwide with takeout in the US and four times points on US supermarkets up to the $25,000 limit. Even if you were to cash out the points for direct cashback, that's still 2.4% cashback on some major categories. Now this card does come with a significant $250 of annual fee, but also has two big credits that help offset that cost, including $120 of dining credit towards places like Grubhub, The Cheesecake Factory, Gold Belly, Wine.com, Milk Bar, and Shake Shack, as well as a $10 a month or $120 total Uber Cash that works towards both rides and eats. Using both to its full potential means you're bringing the effective annual fee of the card down to just $10. Not to mention the 60,000 point bonus that will cover the annual fee a couple times over, with historical offers as high as 90,000 points, or the Resi offer giving you 75,000 points and up to $250 in dining credit as your spend. There are a couple other perks like the hotel collection, baggage insurance, and more, but check out my review for all the details. And hey, it comes in rose gold as well. Which team are you on? Gold or rose gold? The American Express Platinum card. The controversial card that could be your most valuable card like it is for me or just not worth it, at least after the first year. With big sign-up bonuses of 100,000 points, as well as 10 times points at restaurants in the first six months, or as high as 150,000 points when you hit minimum spend in the first six months, so twice as long compared to most other cards, that itself is already enough to fly you round-trip business class to Asia with points to spare. Even if you directly cash out 100,000 points, that's already $600 back. And if you're getting more points through the 10 times points at restaurants, it should be pretty easy to hit at least the annual fee in the first year. But if you can't hit the minimum spend on this card naturally, then do not stretch for this card. Only get cards that you can comfortably hit the minimum spend for. Then now, why is this card so controversial? Well, it's because of one, it's mediocre spending categories that focus solely on travel through their portal or flights direct and nothing else. Now, I don't know about you, but most people I know, including myself, don't travel that often, which makes this card unused for most of the time. That is, unless you can make use of the many credits that come with a card that American Express values at over $1,500. I won't bore you with all the details here, but even if you use just half the credits, that's already enough to cover the annual fee every single year. And that's why it's so controversial, because if you're not able to use the coupon book of credits, then this card is just bad. And couponing is not exactly what premium and luxury usually feels like. However, if you can justify the cost, then you'll be rewarded with a ton of perks that can really elevate your travel. Personally, I'm able to be at least break even and probably in the positive every year with a card because of my use of the credits, along with extra ones like Amex offers, Amazon discount offers, and of course, retention offers. And that's why the Platinum card and American Express in general are regarded so highly. Their customer service is second to none, with most issues being resolved through live chat as well as going through retention discussions and offers, which is a way that Amex can try and retain you as a customer if you're not able to find that much value for the card that year. Through my experiences with the card, in the past about four years with the card, I've gotten two retention offers totaling over 100,000 points. So compared to Chase, Amex is definitely one step higher in terms of more premium cards, and you'll feel it in the price, especially on the Platinum. However, if you're just trying to maximize your points through transferring to partners, then the gold already unlocks that, as well as being the workhorse card to earn a lot of points through spend. That way you can leave the platinum for a time where there's an all-time high offer, as well as having natural spend to hit the minimum. But with either setup, there are rules to follow. On the Chase side, we already talked about the 24-month rule between bonuses on the Chase Freedom cards, but there's also the 48-month rule between bonuses on the Chase Sapphire line of cards. Then on the Amex side, there's a once per lifetime rule on each of their cards. That said, I would recommend anyone starting out to go for the Chase cards first. Given that they're more accessible, having
having more flexible points, as well as still putting you on the same track towards the end game chase trifecta, and starts the clock early for the 24 and 48 month rules, as well as the 524 rule, meaning you won't get approved for new chase cards if you had more than five new cards in the last 24 months. Then while you're getting chase cards, slot in American Express cards whenever there are all time high offers to then really enhance all of your points, especially when there are some overlapping partners that are really valuable, like Virgin Atlantic. So I don't think there's a very clear cut winner here. And it's more about the order that you get these cards as you go through your credit card journey. And so to make sure you're on the right track, go check out this video for the best credit card strategy, especially when you want to travel. See you over there.